Yo guys, what is up? This is Nick. We are back on go, uh, The go. Witcher 3. And I think it was about time we headed back and continue with the main story. We need to meet Regis at... Mayor... Is that a bear? It is a bear. Um, we were actually put it pretty close to, that's why I also decided to do this. Let me go... What got over here? I woke up to my chin and I've caught some rot. Just a drunk guy sitting outside his house. Okay. Uh, we, but we need to... Merlaka Slong <laughs> Cemetery? That's it, Roach. I think that m Meat Regis and Merlaka uh, I'm, you know what, Regis fuck it, I'm not even gonna try to say it. Could have picked some other place to meet. Forget it. I move, Roach! Why are there- there- This is insane. There's ghouls. There's this stupid, more stupid crap that bury, burrows itself under the ground. Come here, you little shit. Not good. I, I am so sick of things that go underground. Just die. It's not what I wanted. I wanted to. Are you kidding me? Where'd you come up? Come here. Oh, shit. Get out of here. Alright. There is something, like, right here. There's a swell that I could jump down. I don't want to do that right now, or... Maybe go meet Regis here. He's... In here? Regis! Damn it. Locked. No way I got the place wrong. This is it. Gotta be. Gotta be another way in around here. Okay, so there's the well. <laughs> Clearly it has to be the well. If it's not this, then I don't know what it could possibly be. You little... Damn. You little sh... Oh my god! Kicking more. Kicking more a work. You know what? I'll take it. It's a different enemy that doesn't throw itself under the ground. I've had enough of that. Kicking more eggs. Need to incinerate these to ash. Okay. Well, we heard the the man. Burn him to the ground. Stench. Oh, shit. One more, there we go. Kikamori Warrior. Kikamori Discharge. That sounds extremely disgusting. This had to be the way we had to come. Let me do a little looting here first. I don't care about that box. It's not gonna have anything in it. Sorry, then. So then I go Someone and pick up. Someone placed an illusion here. Well, hello. There's a sword in here. All right, what do we got in here first? Armor die, die remover. Green gold diamond necklace, green gold emerald necklace, florins. Hold on, what do we got here? A knight's oath. Uh, here rests Sir Raymond, or Raymond of Gritchen. On my grave, you will not find the likeness of the man who once lived. I gave my heart, soul, and body to the knightly craft, and I wish to remem be remembered as a knight. The symbol of chivalry is a naked sword, and that symbol rests above me. The sword that defended my honor, my friends, and my heart. The sword that was closer to me than a brother. The sword that was never stained by the blood of an innocent man. Let it rest on the stone through the ages. Yeah, I'll be taking this. Cassis Foderis. 
All right. Well, I'm level 38. I can't use this sword yet. You got to be level 40. 41. It's not even that much better than the sword I have now. Speaking of that, don't I have like a sword in bad condition here? Yeah, I do. There we go. Well, we have a uh, we have a sword. When we get to level 41, we got a really new good good sword. Toussaint armor. Here we go. <laughs> Agreed to meet a vampire at a cemetery. How much more cliche can you get? <laughs> Nothing comes readily to mind. Could have left the door unlatched. What of my privacy? I value it rather deeply. Unmolested, especially by unwanted guests, that's my preferred state. Besides, I knew you'd find a way to get in. True enough. Need to find your friend. I'm hoping you'll agree to help. I shall do whatever's in my power. Yet what you want or even need must matter little. What matters is what Detlaf wants. If he does not wish to be found, you will not find him. Ever. End of story. Come on. Gotta be some way. Hmm. Vampires can evade detection by the senses, and no divination magic works on us. Even the most precise megascope would be useless. And this? Could this help? Wherever did you get that? Off one of the beast's victims, found by a bend in the river. Body was chopped in pieces. Three of those pieces were hands. Hand with the ring seemed the odd one out. But Bruxa had taken an interest in it. It's Detlaf's hand, without a doubt. It will do splendidly. Ring's pretty intriguing. Made of no metal I've ever seen. And the ornamentation. It comes from our home. Where we lived before the conjunction of spheres. It's actually mine. I received it from a dear old friend. You might call him a humanist. He saw us vampires as guests here, guests who owe their hosts, meaning you humans and the elder races, respect. Respect? Meaning not to treat us like cattle to be slaughtered for food? Precisely. And the reason why I in turn gave it to Detlaf. To remind him of the ideals my old friend championed. Can't you just summon Detlaf? You're both higher vampires, there's gotta be a way. If I'm to be entirely candid, there is indeed one. But believe me, we will be better off never availing ourselves of it. It is a last resort. Absolutely. Last resort? The hell. Why? Uh... There is a being who can summon Detlaf. Possesses the authority, even the power, to force him to appear in a given place. But the very act of contacting this being... Well, it's akin to walking a slack line extended over a chasm filled with molten lava. An exercise as perilous to me as it would be to you. A risk I'm unwilling to take. I beg you, let's do it my way. It will be both quicker and easier. The hand. What do you plan to do with it? You've heard of Kobinaris' theory of tissue memory retention. Hmm. Rings a distant bell. Read about it in Alchemia Obliterae. There's a copy of Kaer Morin, tattered, nearly disintegrated. But if memory serves, Covenarius never managed to prove it worked. He did prove it, just never managed to publish his findings. He and I corresponded, you see, after we became friends. Thus, I know he completed his research and performed the first tests. It's complicated, so without delving into details, it is possible to use any piece of tissue to reconstruct what a whole body experienced. How's it work? We need any special equipment? We must brew a decoction which Covinaris gave a rather poetic name. Resonance. 
Once imbibed, it sends one into a trance similar to that induced by narcotics. This triggers visions of events linked to strong emotions experienced by the tissue's owner. Picture it as dreaming a fragment of someone's life. Any chance we might see what Dedloff was doing just before he lost his hand? Indeed. Though I also hope Resonance will reveal the location of Dedloff's hideout. Covenarius spent half his life proving his theory. Wild guess. Making a dose of Resonance won't be easy. You guessed correctly. In addition to Detlaf's tissue, we shall need a powerful occipital lobe stimulant. Effectively a poison, to make one susceptible to visions. Hmm. Well, got a few ingredients to choose from. Unfortunately, all are pretty rare. There's mamoon glands, but closest ones I know of are in Vizima. A spotted white saliva would also serve, but they were called to extinction over a century ago. Could go with a kobold's eyes, but the creatures are sentient. Rather not gouge one's eyes out. Hmm. Given that we lack the time to sleuth this out ourselves, permit me to summon some help. Was that a raven? Rather a common sight at this latitude. Very intelligent fowl. I asked him to look for the creatures you mentioned. Him and his brethren. Perhaps they'll find one in the area. And I would hazard that a flock of ravens will spy any said creature faster than a solitary witcher would. With all due respect, your skills, my friend. It will take them some time, nonetheless. So, perhaps you'd care for a snifter of mandrake. Rarely say no to a snifter. Sadly, this is but a weak infusion rather than a proper distillate. Even better. I remember your mandrake hooch. Made people say things they'd have rather kept to themselves. Now, what could Geralt of Rivia prefer to keep to himself? Everyone's got some secret. I agree wholeheartedly. I also believe it wise at times to share one's secrets, unburden oneself to those one can trust. This your sophisticated way of asking me if I trust you? I prefer almost always to ask you directly. It seems a test of intelligence, one you just passed. Hmm. Maybe you should go first. Reveal one of your secrets. After all, you vampires lead very interesting lives. Anything in particular interest you? Curious what you did after you were reborn. As I'm sure you can surmise, but first I was thoroughly absorbed with recovering. As it is, I've still not recovered completely. Yet I was so weak the first year that I could not stand nor move on my own. Detlaf bore my weakness bravely, showed great patience. If not for him, I wouldn't be here, and I'd have regenerated far slower. Once I could at last stand unassisted, I set off for Bruges for my one-time home of Dillingen. There I led the peaceful life of a rural healer and surgeon, enjoying my neighbor's respect and, in fact, constituting the exact opposite of the monstrous vampire the populace imagines. Bruges, you say? Rebirth make you sentimental? Perhaps, Sir Dash. But what of you? Where have you been? Ever find your Cirilla? Back then, yeah. But we parted again soon after. And when the time was ripe, she came back. Defeated the wild hunt together. Ooh. Seems I certainly missed quite a bit while I was absent. True enough. But it's a conversation we'll have another time. Need to know more about you now. Gotta ask you the big question. One everyone wonders about. What happens after death? 
You wish me to tell you if the human belief in the gods is well founded? Well, that I do not know. We vampires differ exceedingly from you humans. Our matter, that of which we are composed, can exist without form. We require neither a heart, nor a brain, nor air to breathe. But were you dead? As humans understand death, yes. Feel anything? Understand anything? Hmm. It's rather hard to explain. I felt something very unsettling. Something I cannot even name, for I did no reasoning. Only after rebirth did I begin to understand that what I had felt was cold and unimaginable fear. If not for Detlef, I might have drowned in an eternity of icy terror. Can't have been alive then. Sheesh, experience like that must be vicious. Mm. Indeed, it's, it's hard to compare to anything I know. Yet you are aware we don't see death as you do. The way you cling to life, we find it entirely peculiar. You are mortals. Ergo, it's a foregone conclusion. You will die. It's but a question of time. Thus, I often find myself wondering why you try so very hard. To die at 20 years, 40, even 100, what's the difference? They're all but the blink of an eye. Depends on your point of view. Man who's got a million crowns to spend can't possibly understand one who's only got 20. Very true. One's outlook can indeed change much. Got a new life, new body. That give you a new start, blank slate? Starting all anew is a very broad concept. What exactly do you mean? Your blood addiction, say. Wondering if your body's the same, if it still remembers. Maybe if you drank now, you wouldn't get hooked. All addictions are a form of slavery. Re-addiction's not a risk I'm willing to take, just to test a hypothesis about corporeal regeneration and whether propensities carry over. Fair enough. Curiosity, that's all. Sorry. Not to worry, Geralt. Curiosity is a natural reaction under the circumstances, apart from which I've always valued that trait in you. Always fascinated me the way vampires can regenerate. A hand growing back is one thing, but Detloff recreating you out of a wet smear? Something else entirely. A difficult and laborious process, but one that's possible. As my presence proves, but, but I've heard you too had quite the adventure. They say you lost your memory. For a bit, but Triss helped me get it back. Actually pretty damn lucky I only had amnesia. Yes, you humans are rather buggered in those terms. To strip you of life is, well, it's just plain easy. I've always pitied you in that regard. We vampires are much harder nuts to crack. If a member of another race kills one of us, we can be reborn with a living eye of vampire's help. However, if one of our own strikes the deadly blow, death is permanent. There can be no rebirth. One of the chief reasons why vampires long ago swore never to fight one another. All right, give you one question. What do you want to know? One question to ask one as fascinating as you, Geralt. Cruel parsimony, I'd say, but I shall do my best to make it count. If you were to die and be reborn as I was, in your new life, would you choose to be a witcher? See, Regis. Doubt I'd know how to be anything else. Ever tried? See, you're determined to get an answer, to find out if I like being a witcher. Just refuse to ask directly, as always. I like being on the path. I like picking up a lead, a trail. I like the tension right before a fight, and nothing gets my adrenaline flowing like battling a beast. Even gotten used to people treating me like a freak, an outcast. Yeah, not something I think about much, but I like being a witcher. Thank you for being honest. Honesty is an attribute of the truly brave, and thus a privilege of the very few. Still no sign of your winged friend. Sure it understood what you wanted? Dead certain. Let's wait a bit longer. It'll return soon, don't doubt that for a moment.
ever vigilant, even in his sleep. Quite vampire-like, in fact. Are you absolutely certain they don't administer a few of our genes during the trial of the grasses? Appreciate the compliment. Got something for me? You were right. No kobolds or mamoons for miles around. Knew it. Allow me to finish. You see, there's this spotted white. It haunts an abandoned residence in the Caroberta woods. Impossible. My brethren hunted down every last spotted white before I was born. Then it seems you must revise your knowledge of spotted whites. For somehow this one managed to survive your brethren's onslaught. Hmm. It seems I know this home it haunts. Recall a tale about it. Locals believe the place cursed. Perhaps that's how the white survived entirely unmolested. Whites rarely appear in the woods, even less likely to find them in abandoned human homes. They inhabit remote wildernesses, old abandoned cemeteries. What's your point? This might not be a spotted white after all. Your little helper might have made a mistake. I sincerely doubt it. Ravens are devilishly intelligent creatures, and they've highly developed observational skills. What exactly did they observe? The area around the estate. It's covered in... spoons. Spoons? Spare me the skeptical smile. I'm but the bearer of this news. Or perhaps this spotted white is a hoarder. Or the spoons are somehow related to the curse. Hmm. Know anything else about this curse? I don't recall much in particular. Really don't attach much importance to such things. It was mentioned to me as an anecdote, no more. Come on, search your memory. Something, anything could be important. Hmm. I believe it had a relation to hunger, or uh, no, um, perhaps greed, rapacity. Someone was punished for something... <laughs> Textbook definition of a curse, pretty much. Sorry, Geralt. I try not to clutter my mind with the details of every far-fetched tale I happen to hear. Hmm. What are your thoughts? A specimen of a species thought long extinct. And a curse. In one place. That a coincidence? Or are they related? Ah, professional curiosity. Personally, I've nothing against you delving into this dilemma, but please remember we need the White's saliva. Nothing beyond that. Let's do this. Start making your decoction while I go get some saliva from that white. Uses it in its brews. Do you imagine the white will simply sell you some? Worst case scenario, I'll bring you its salivary glands. They ought to do as well. <laughs> For a moment there, I imagined you asking the white to spit into a vial. <laughs> Quite amusing as a thought, but the salivary glands will do fine indeed. So, see you later. Yes, till later. I shall start by perusing some tomes. Tomes? Thought you were gonna make this decoction. We require one last ingredient. Alas, obtaining it could prove a trifle toilsome. Thus, I hope to identify a suitable alternative. All right. Good luck. And to you, my friend. All right, so, to end off this episode, First of all, I saw this. Let's grab this gold plate. Um, let's read the bestiary to learn more about Spotted Whites. Um, I may read or skim real quick over this at the start of the next episode, but uh, let's go ahead and read it in this one. Now, where would Spotted Whites be? Vampire? No, but we got something new on Detloff. Um, one must remember higher vampires are immortal creatures and thus do not fear for their lives while fighting, meaning they take every risk. They are able to turn invisible and can regenerate strength during combat. All in all, they are supremely difficult foes, even for a witcher. I think I already had that. So I actually don't know what was new there. Um, uh, let's see. Relics? Okay, it's not a relic. Is it a necro? It's got to be a necrophage. Yes, spotted whites. Alright, it is weak to necrophage oil, igni, and urdin. Uh, the best defense against spotted whites, stay calm and leave them alone. 
Fragment of a, te a Treatise on Spotted Whites by Roderick Gilligan. Uh, spotted Whites were a subspecies of white which the witchers drove to extinction. They were larger than their unspotted kin and owned their names to their numerous blotches and effusions. Spotted Whites would most often dwell in derelict cemeteries and empty wilderness, yet at times took to living in abandoned human domiciles. There they, could, they would indulge in their greatest passion, creating brews from their own emissions. When not disturbed, Spotted Whites would not act aggressively. If threatened, however, they became very dangerous indeed. In the colder months or when faced with an unseasonable chill, they would slip into a state of lethargy, making them easy targets. Even during their active periods, it is said the witchers found a surefire way of besting them, based around careful casting of Erden sign, or at least so claims witcher lore. So Igni, Erden, and Necrophage Oil. Do I have Necrophage Oil? Now the question. Uh, necrophage. I do. Enhanced necrophage oil. Um, is there an alchemy for superior necrophage oil? Do I have that? No, I don't have it. Uh, so that kind of sucks. But we should be good with what we have. Obviously... Erden to slow them down, and Igni to deal fire damage. We'll probably just go with that. Uh, but that is going to do it for this episode, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. It's a little bit easier now. Do I? Can I just walk through? Yes, okay. We don't... Is there anything up at the top here? Looks kind of... Just going to there. Where is he at? Ah, oh, there he is up there. What do we got here? Arcadius Baravic lived to a ripe old age. In fact, he lived so long he died of boredom. Okay. There is some lootable stuff in here. What shall become of Tamaria? Biography of the Vampire Regis from the... Qua Ooh. Let's go ahead and read this. Oh my god, this is long. Well, why not? Let's read it. It's important. It's kind of important. Like, this stuff. Guide to Vineyards of Toussaint. Yeah, we don't need that. The Great Beauclair. Okay, like, stuff like... Okay. Ooh, let's do this. Long reading. This is going to take a minute, so I guess, like, if you don't care, I'll probably end this off shortly after I read this. There may be another reading, so if you're not interested in that, click off the video now. I will not be offended. Uh, one of the most extraordinary individuals I have encountered during my numerous adventures as Geralt's side was a vampire known as Regis. To be precise, he was known as Emil Regis Rahalek Terziath Godfroy. By his own reckoning, he was 428 years old and was the descendant of an unfortunate being trapped in our world during the conjunction of spheres. You are surely thinking, dear reader, about catechins, alps, and other such monsters and are pondering how it was that the Witcher, who it must be admitted is a slayer of monsters, came to keep such company. I must here explain that Regis was a higher vampire, a creature which physically does not differ all that much from a man. Higher vampires are also much more powerful than their wild confries, and their regenerative abilities significantly outpace those of anything else you have encountered or can even imagine. But it is not because of his outer appearance or inner strengths that Regis became our dear companion. True, he could be pretentious and rather pompous in his frequent length perora perorations, but one would be hard-pressed to find in him the haughtiness usually present in higher beings. Regis valued human life uh, dearly and refused to kill unless forced to do so. As he once confessed, higher vampires do not in fact need to drink blood at all in order to survive. They treat it somewhat as we treat alcohol. 
a rough grasp of this dynamic must might be given to you by the fact that when we met him, Regis had been abstinent for years. He never revealed to us why he decided to join our search for Siri. He had never met her before, nor did he live to see her. He died at Stig Castle during the battle against the Mad Mage Vilgefortz, who was who was responsible for the whole affair. He died for a cause which he surely did not fully understand, but he did it to defend those he held dear and simply because it was the right thing to do. I shall always remember him as a rural surgeon seeking reeking of herbs. That is how he came to us during our first encounter at the Fencarn Necropolis when he treated me and my companions to a fantastic brew he had made from Mandrake Group. Wherever you are, my friend, bottoms up. Alright, that was a nice read. It was worth it. Royal lineage Lineages of the North. Okay, this is kind of interesting. Cirilla Fionn and Ellen Rhiannon, born in 1251, heirs to the throne of Sintra, princess of Brug and duchess of Sodden, heiress in Innis Ardskella and Innis Anskellige, or Skellig, and suzerain of Altur and Abyara, daughter, daughter of Pavetta, C. Pavetta Fiona Ellen, and the Urchian of Iron, or I, is that an L or an I? I think it's an L. Arlen Walsy Amir Var Emery's granddaughter of the famous lioness of Sintra, Queen Calantha, C. Calthan Fiona Rhiannon. So that's how we got Cyrilla Fiona and Fiona Ellen Rhiannon. Uh, that's kind of interesting because I, I didn't know that, so that's an interesting... I'm happy I read this. Uh, a shipwreck uh, occurred during a journey from Sintra to Skellige, which took the lives of the Urchian and Pavetta. Sorella's further upbringing was then entrusted to her grandmother. Uh, in 1260, afraid of the looming of guardian threat, Queen Calantha sent Sorella to the court of King Erville. See, Erville of Erden, uh, where the heiress of Sintra was to marry the heir to the throne of Verdun, Prince Kistrin, see Kistrin of Verdun, uh, though allying with Verdun priority, no marriage ever occurred. And Cirilla returned to her grandmother's court in 1262 during the so-called Sintra Massacre, so Cirilla went missing. If only there was more to this book. Any other? Oh, there is more books over here. What Shall Become of Tamaria and Royal Lineages of the North. Is that the same exact book I just picked up? It is. Okay, so there's some reading to be done about Siri, if I so choose, which I kind of am interested in. We've got some different alcohols up here. Add those to the collection. My last thought before I succumb to sleep. Okay, we don't need to read that. Hey buddy, what do you got under your hand there? Regeneration potion formula. Here we go. Eight measures of vervain extract, leshen fang, sanctorum, alphantra, broth made of young mandrake shoots, Grind the larger ingredients, add the smaller ones whole, boil everything in a bronze kettle using crystal water, consume the mixture twice daily in half measure doses, do not exceed the recommended dosage. Uh -huh. Alright, so this was really, uh, in my opinion, really worth coming back down here. Uh, I got a little bit of a reading done on Siri, uh, which I'm always interested in always interested in the lore of this game like I love this game so always interested to read up on different stuff maybe I'll have like a I definitely think when we do Witcher Revisited we're gonna read like every book um and so that series whenever I choose to do it is gonna be crazy long like like it's gonna be ridiculous how much effort like how much time I'm gonna invest into that because that's like my that'll be like 
I can't get this thing. That'll be like almost my goodbye to Witcher almost. Like I think I'll go back and do Witcher 2 again just to do the other ending, but it's kind of sad, you know, once I finish this up, that's the end of like new Witcher stuff for the time being. There is that game coming out called Gwent, the Witcher card game. I don't know what that is. I'm buying it, but I have no idea what that is. I will play it on the channel whenever it comes out. There is a beta for it. I don't know if I'll sign up for the beta or what, but... Alright, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, thank you all for sticking around who did and listened to me read to you. Um, I found out some cool stuff that I didn't know, um, and uh, that, that that's pretty much it. I enjoyed the little reading session I had, but I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out!